Hi, good morning. Happy Monday. For social studies, um, for your first assignment, you have to read section three of the chapter about World War II and then answer the questions that are on the Google Doc right here. And you should try to have this assignment done by Wednesday, May 20th. This section um, talks about how life was at home during World War II. The last section, uh, we read about the United States and um, the attack on Pearl Harbor, which eventually led to um, the United States entering the war instead of remaining neutral. The War at Home. Why it matters. World War II involved the people and resources of each nation on a scale that had not been seen before. Americans at home labored in neighborhoods, factories, and fields to help their country achieve victory. Some Americans faced discrimination and racism during the war years. Organizing the war. The first challenge the United States faced was to build up its armed forces. Even before Pearl Harbor, Congress had enacted a draft law. Just days after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Congress revised the law to require people to serve for the entire war. Building the military. Eventually, more than 15 million volunteers and draftees would, we, would wear the American uniform during World War II. The number included Americans from every ethnic and religious group and newly built military bases around the country, recruits trained to fight in the jungles of the Pacific, the deserts of North Africa, and the farmlands and towns of Europe. Hundreds of thousands of American women were also in uniform during World War II. They served as nurses or in non-combat roles in special branches such as the Women's Army Corps or the WAC. Women pilots ferried bombers from base to base, towed targets, and taught men to fly. <clears throat> a wartime economy. Industry quickly converted its output from consumer to military goods. The government established a war production board to supervise the changeover and set goals for production. As a result, military output nearly doubled. The war quickly ended the Great Depression. Unemployment fell as millions of jobs opened up in factories. Minority workers found jobs where they had been rejected in the past. Supporting the war effort. <clears throat> All Americans were expected to play a role in supplying Allied forces with food, clothing, and war equipment. As in World War I, Americans planted victory gardens to supplement food supplies and bought war bonds to help pay military costs. To conserve needed resources, the government imposed rationing. Rationing is the act of setting limits on the amount of scarce goods people can buy. Americans were issued ration coupons to purchase coffee, sugar, meat, shoes, gasoline, tires, and many other goods. War bond campaigns, rationing, and victory gardens did more than help pay for the war effort. They also gave citizens at home a sense that they were helping to win the war. Thus, they helped maintain public morale during the long struggle. Women in industry. With millions of men in uniform, defense industries needed a new source of labor. The government began a long-scale effort to recruit women for industry. Millions of women took over jobs in factories and shipyards. Some welded, tended blast furnaces, or ran huge cranes. Others became bus drivers, police officers, or gas station attendants. A fictional character, Rosie the Riveter, became a popular symbol of all women who worked for the war effort. Because women were needed in industry, they were able to gain better pay and working conditions. 
the government agreed that women and men should get the same pay for the same job. Some employers, however, found ways to avoid equal pay. War work gave many American women a new sense of confidence and independence. It gave me a good start in life, said welder Nova Lee Holbrook. I decided that if I could learn to weld like a man, I could do anything it took to make a living. The Ordeal for Japanese Americans At the start of the war, about 300,000 people of Japanese origin lived in the United States. More than half resided in Hawaii. The rest lived mostly on the West Coast, especially in California. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, many Americans feared that Japanese Americans would act as spies to help enemy submarines shell military bases or coastal cities. In truth, such suspicions were baseless. There was not a single documented case of disloyalty by a Japanese American. <clears throat> Internment. The intense anti-Japanese fears led President Roosevelt to issue Executive Order 9066 in February of 1942. The order was used to intern or temporarily <clears throat> imprison some 110,000 Japanese Americans for the duration of the war. Internees were allowed to bring with them only what they could carry. They had to sell the rest of their possessions quickly at a fraction of their worth. The U.S. American Army <clears throat> then transported them from the West Coast to small remote internment camps enclosed by barbed wire. Armed soldiers looked down on them from guard towers. In, 19, in the 1994 case of Korematsu versus United States, the Supreme Court ruled that military necessity justified internment. Still, three of the nine justice, justices dissented. One wrote, We must accord great respect and consideration to the judgments of the military authorities who are on the scene and who have full knowledge of the military facts. At the same time, however, it is essential that there be definite limits to military discretion. Individuals must not be left impoverished of their constitutional rights on plea of military necessity that has neither substance nor support. Frank Murphy dissenting opinion of Kuramatsu versus United States. <clears throat> As the war ended, the government released the internees. In 1948, it made a small payment to them for the property they had lost. However, a formal apology did not come until 1990. At that time, the government paid $20,000 to each surviving internee. Japanese Americans in uniform. For Japanese Americans being imprisoned on such vague charges was a humiliating experience. Still, about 17,000 Japanese Americans showed their loyalty by joining the armed services. All Japanese units fought in North Africa, Italy, and France, winning thousands of military awards and medals. One group of Japanese-American soldiers, the 442nd Nasai Regimental Combat Team, became the most highly decorated military unit in the United States history. Tensions at Home Japanese-Americans were not the only group to face wartime restrictions. About 11,000 German-Americans and several hundred Italian-Americans were also held in government camps as enemy aliens. Most of these were foreign-born foreign born residents who had not yet achieved citizenship. Other German Americans and Italian and Americans faced curfews and travel restrictions. African Americans. Um, as in past wars, African Americans served in segregated units during World War II. Groups such as the NAACP and the National Association of Colored Graduate Nurses protest, protested against the racial policy of the armed forces and the military nursing corps. 
Discrimination was also widespread in industries doing business with government. Some African-American leaders pointed out that while the nation was fighting for democracy overseas, it still permitted injustice at home. Union leader A. Philip Randolph, head of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, threatened a mass protest unless Roosevelt moved to end discrimination in the armed forces. In response, the president ordered employers doing business with the government to support racial equality in hiring. To enforce the order, he set up the Fair Employment Practices Committee, or the FEPC, to investigate charges of discrimination. The FEPC and the growing need for workers opened many jobs that had previously been closed to African Americans. By the end of 1944, about 2 million African Americans were working in war plants. <clears throat> However, as employment of African Americans increased, so did racial tension. Thousands of Americans, black people, and white people moved to cities to work in industry. Competition for scarce housing led to angry incidents and even violence. In 1943, race riots broke out in Detroit, New York, and other American cities. Mexican Americans About half a million Mexican Americans served in the armed forces during World War II. At the same time, the Mexican-American population was increasing because of the need for workers. The United States signed a treaty with Mexico in 1942. It allowed American companies to hire braceros or Mexican laborers. As more Mexicans moved north to work on farms and railroads, they often faced prejudice and violent strife. Young Americans in Los Angeles often dressed in showy zoot suits. Their clothing and language set them apart. In June 1943, band of sailors on shore leave attacked young Mexican Americans, beating them and clubbing them on the streets. The incident sparked several days of rioting. Newspaper blamed the zoot suit riots on the Mexican Americans, but in her newspaper column, Eleanor Roosevelt argued that the riots were the result of long-standing discrimination against the Mexicans in the Southwest. Looking back and ahead, despite problems at home, Americans were united in their resolve to push on to victory in Europe and the Pacific. In the next section, you will see how that victory was won.